So Apple products, especially their computers, have always been marketed towards the creative type, right? The person that photo edits in Photoshop, the person that's video editing in Final Cut Pro, the person that's trying to render a game in this immersive world. But as somebody who started their professional career in corporate America and somebody that went to school that used primarily the Microsoft suite of products, I was somebody that still loved my Apple computer and software experience so much that I wanted to use Microsoft products on my MacBook computer. So in this video, what I wanted to do was walk you guys through the main three Microsoft productivity applications, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and show you guys just how efficient, how powerful, and just how much you can get done with Microsoft products on an M series powered MacBook. So without further ado, let's see exactly how well Microsoft runs on an Apple laptop. Let's get into it. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Setapp. If you're looking to avoid paying thousands of dollars for premium and professional level licensed Mac apps, then channel sponsor Setup has you covered. They're an awesome platform that provides access to a curated list of professional level apps and tools built for Mac OS and iOS, all for a small monthly fee. There are new apps being added to set up on a regular basis and currently has a library of over 240 applications. And not only are these full professional versions of these applications, but all future updates are free. My favorite feature has to be the smart search. You can simply look up the type of application you need and set up recommends the perfect application for that task. And lastly, you have your collections, which are a bundle of applications that are built to work together to help you accomplish your task in the most efficient way possible. So instead of paying thousands in licensing fees for all these different software companies, Setup is just $9.99 a month. But for a limited time, Setup is offering $9.99 5 Mac viewers 40% off their holiday bundle, which not only includes access to Setup, but also one password and masterclass. So if you're looking to level up your productivity or if you just want to try out new softwares in your workflow, click on the link below and give Setup a try before the holiday special ends on January 10th. Thank you to Setup for partnering up with 9 to 5 Mac and back to the video. Okay, everyone, so let's jump right into this video. And the first thing I want to do is quickly show you how to actually install Microsoft Office because there's actually two ways to do it. You can either go to Microsoft's website itself, so just go to Microsoft.com, and then you can sign up through here and download them from here. But I do recommend actually, if you do have an account already and you don't need to actually create an email or anything like that, then I do recommend just going to the App Store and downloading it from there because if you download from the App Store, then you're guaranteed to get the software updates directly from the App Store. And then also you are guaranteed to have the ARM version of these applications because I remember when I first installed Microsoft Office, I tried to install it directly from the website and they weren't the ARM versions. They were the Intel versions of these applications for Microsoft Office. So it didn't really work and it ended up being a very broken experience. So if you do download it directly from the App Store, then you'll be able to run the ARM versions of these applications seamlessly on your M-Series MacBook. And then I will say that I am using the M2 MacBook Air, 256 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. So I did upgrade the RAM from eight to 16, but I will say that I used to have the baseline M1 MacBook Air and that at $800 with even eight gigs of RAM is more than enough to run the productivity suite from Microsoft. So I will link down below because Amazon is having a great sale on the M1 MacBook Air, which to me is the number one most recommendable laptop at that price point period because it works so well for the price. So like I mentioned, we will be talking about the main three applications, Microsoft PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. And then in a future video, we probably will touch on Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Teams, and Microsoft OneDrive. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually open these. And I'm going to show you guys just how quickly these applications open. It baffles me how quickly. So if I just click all three of them, immediately they open. Like there was no lag. Let's quit out of these. And I'm going to show you guys again. Let's open up Excel immediately, PowerPoint immediately, Word immediately. And again, this was not the case back when we had the Intel versions of these MacBooks. I had an i5 MacBook Air from about 2018 or 2019, and my laptop would scream. It was like it was an airplane taking off whenever we would try to open just a simple Word document again. So let's do it one more time because it's, again, it astounds me just how quickly these applications open, how quickly they run, and it just baffles me how well it's built for a Mac machine. So in this video, we're gonna go over pretty much the basics. So let's go into Microsoft Word first because it's probably the most familiar one to everybody. Everybody's used Microsoft Word in the past. So I wanted to touch on Microsoft Word quickly just to show you guys exactly what you're dealing with. And maybe if you have a Windows computer, you can pull that out and kind of compare to see if it does work the same, if there are some nuanced differences and if there are any missing features because I really don't think there are any. So let's just open up a blank document. So this is again, very similar. If you are a Microsoft Word user, then this is gonna be a very similar experience. So obviously up top, you have your toolbar up here. So you have your file, edit, view, insert, format, tools, table, window, and then help. But you have that for every Mac application period. But if you go here, it's very, very simple. It's exactly like Windows, right? You have your home set, which allows you to change your font, your font size. You know, you have your shortcuts right here, bold, italic, underline. So if I type in hello, you can see that my shortcuts will work. So I can bold, I can italicize. 
I can underline if I want to, I can strike out. So these are all things that work you know, very seamlessly and you would expect them to work very well. You do, you do have the ability to see where it's lined up. You have the ability to add bullets, numbered bullets. You have the drop down menu so you can customize those bullets. So again, it is very familiar if you're used to Microsoft Word from Windows. And then if I keep going through the toolbar, we're gonna go into the insert section. Let's see exactly what they have going on here. So you can actually insert multiple pages. You can add a page cover, a page break. You can easily go in here and add a table. So let's say if I wanna add a table like this and start typing in there, it absolutely works with no issues whatsoever. But if we continue on here, you can actually insert pictures from browser, from file, stock images, or online pictures. You can add a multitude of shapes, arrows, you know, different abbreviations, whatever shape you can think of, Microsoft has it pre-built in. You even have the ability to add icons. So you can go click on the icons picture and then you have a, some stock images that you can choose from. So if I wanna add a Band-Aid, insert it in here, I inserted it right inside of that little table that we created earlier and it works extremely well. You can resize it, you can move it around, you can add it to a different box if you want to all works very, very seamlessly. And again, you do need internet connection to get these stock images, but just wanna let you guys know that it is there when you do need it. Then you can see that the actual toolbar changes up a little bit, so you can actually fill in the graphic, you can change the color of the Band-Aid, alternate text, text wrap, all the settings that you would need to actually work with an added icon inside of the actual document. So as you can see, we can also draw with the draw tool, we can erase as well, so stroke eraser. If I wanna just erase right there, absolutely, it's totally gone. You can change your tips right here, change the color, change the pencil, change the highlight. And we will be also going over these Microsoft applications on the iPad, which, so the drawing aspect will make a little bit more sense because you can use the Apple Pencil and it's a little bit more customizable, but you're able to do that. And then you can actually turn this on to draw with the trackpad. So draw with one finger on the trackpad. You can see that I'm drawing right there. You can see that it's a little bit lighter because I'm using the crayon, but if I just press escape, Let's say, let's say I wanna use the actual marker. Let's draw with the trackpad and say, hello. And there it is, very, very cool. And then everything else is very self-explanatory, right? You have your different layouts and designs that you can change up that are pre-built in here to help you kind of organize all your thoughts and organize whatever document you're creating. You can change the entire layout, so orientation, margins, change the size of it. And again, page breaks, line numbers. You can do hyphenations, right? And then you can also do all your references as well here, right? So you have your APA format, your Chicago, your MLA. So if you are a student, you can easily do your MLA citations directly from Microsoft Word on your Mac OS computer. And then you even have your whole review section. So if you wanna go into review, so let's say you wanna hand this off to somebody else, or let's say you're a teacher and a lot of documents are sent to you via Word, you can now go into the review section and start to annotate, change, scratch through things, and then send it back to your student with all your customizations and all your suggestions to make that essay better. And then lastly, since we are now cloud-based, right? Microsoft is pretty much a subscription service. It is 100% cloud-based, so you do have access to it via the internet as well. So you can do an online version of it if you don't wanna download the applications. You do have the ability to share. So you can share via your OneDrive, you can share you know, within your organization, share with a friend, the same way you would share on Google Drive, and then both of you can have full access to it and collaborate in real time. But that is Microsoft Word in a nutshell, in my opinion, it is 100% there compared to the Windows version of it. It just runs on Mac, which I love to see. And honestly, it's a little bit prettier on Mac in my opinion. Okay, everybody, so now let's go into Microsoft PowerPoint. Microsoft PowerPoint is, again, very similar to Windows version of Microsoft PowerPoint. So you open it up, you have your left toolbar, which is your home, then you have your new, recent, shared, and then your open section right here. And this is, again, you just have a bunch of different templates that you can go into, double click on it, and then you just have a template to work off of. And I think this is a great way to explain pretty much all the features of Microsoft PowerPoint. Because first, let's just go over the main stuff. So you have all your different slides on the left-hand side, very familiar, right? With this template, you can just add different things that's already pre-made, ready to go. But you have your home section. So if I wanna go in here and edit this, I can actually go into my text right here. You have your text font, very similar to Microsoft Word. So that's what's good about Microsoft. It's very universal, so if you know how to use, let's say if you know how to use Microsoft Word extremely well, then you'll know how to use like 90% of Microsoft Excel and 90% of Microsoft PowerPoint. Each application has about a 10% nuance and 10% some differences that make it its own application. But outside of that, the actual navigation is pretty much exactly the same and it's done that way on purpose, right? So you have all your text editing, you have your bullet points, your paragraphs, your alignment, the ability to insert pictures, you know, insert shapes, you know, create text boxes, arrange, shape fillers, all that good stuff. And then you even have something called designer, which I love to see. So designer is actually very, very intuitive because what it does is that it takes all the assets that you have already on here. So let's say I had a blank document and I threw in just a bunch of images, then designer automatically would just start to lay it out how you think it would see fit. So it gives you different ideas, some thought starters as to how you wanna organize the layout of the actual slide itself. So if I like this one, boom, Contasso, all hands on deck. 
Now this is what it's gonna look like moving forward and I can start to add text and work that way. And then the toolbar is exactly the same. So you have your insert section to insert all of your symbols. You can insert video, audio, you can do a little cameo as well, which basically allows you to put yourself in the bottom right hand corner and then start presenting like that. You know, you have your classic word art, you can do your scheduled time, slide numbers, add comments, which is awesome. So I can add a little comment right here. So if I share it with somebody, then that person will be able to actually see it. And then we go into the draw section, very similar to Microsoft Word. It would probably work better on the iPad itself, but you still have the ability to draw if you want to. So if I want to draw, I have the black pen open and you can see that I'm drawing right on there perfectly well. And then I have the little lasso effects. So if I want to lasso all of this and create this as an image, then I can just move it around. I can make it smaller. And then let's say this was an actual shape that I created. I'd be good to go. And then you also have some nice tools on here called ink to text, ink to shape and ink to math which again, they're very, very self-explanatory. So for instance, if I wanna do an ink to text, so if I wanna say over here and just write hi, and then I do ink to text, and then I grab the lasso, lasso that hi, and then I do ink to text, it should ideally turn that into text. And then the same thing applies for a shape. So let's say I grab my circle tool or I grab my ink tool, I draw a circle. It's not a very good circle. I grab the lasso, circle that lasso up, and then ink to shape should turn it into some sort of circle. Boom, it does turn it into a circle. And let's do ink to math, actually. This is a cool one that I haven't actually tried yet. So I do one. And then if I do the lasso effect, circle that up, ink to math, one plus two equals. So it does turn it into an actual math equation, which I'm all for. And then you also have, like I said, the ability to draw with a trackpad, just like you do with Microsoft Word. Now this is where it gets a little bit different compared to Microsoft Word because you have your design. So basically just how you wanna lay it out, what colors you want, what color palette you would like. You have all your different transitions that you can add on here. And it looks like you have an abundance of transitions. So you'll never really run out if you want to or you don't want to. You can add sound, you can change the duration of it. You can add as many animations as you would like, which is crazy. So many animations. If you just drop this down, you have all these animations to choose from on this side as well. You know, you can exit animations, path animations. Then you have the ability to actually start your slideshow. One really cool feature about Microsoft PowerPoint is this feature called Rehearse with Coach. So what you can do is actually go through this process and actually start to record exactly what's going on. And what it'll do is it'll start to record all your ums, it'll start to record all your breaks, it'll start to tell you like, hey, you should do a little bit better with this and this and this. So if I wanna just end this slideshow right now, it will eventually give you suggestions on what exactly happened and then some stats. It was like how long you were talking for, how many breaks you had and things of that nature. So rehearsing with a coach is a great little add-on. And then you have the review, the view, and then you can also, of course, share this with as many people as you want. So that is Microsoft PowerPoint in a nutshell. Overall, I think it's fully there if you guys do wanna check it out, especially compared to PowerPoint running on a Windows machine. And now let's briefly talk about Microsoft Excel because Microsoft Excel is one of those applications that you either love it or you hate it, or you're either kind of like a master Excel user or you're just a basic Excel user. There seems to be no real in between. So let's open up one of these templates right here. So let's go annual financial report just to kind of see how it works. But again, overall, if you're familiar with Microsoft Office in totality, then most of the toolbar is going to be relatively the same. It's just going to have a little bit of nuance when it comes to some of your actual Excel kind of hotkeys, your variables, your summations, your pivot tables, all that good stuff. But again, the toolbar changes a little bit. So you have your wrap text, you have your merge to center, you have all your different icons and I guess your units of measure, depending on its dollars, percentage, you know, how many decimal points you want. You have your conditional formatting up here. You know, you have the ability to do cell styles, insert, delete, format, auto sum, which is great to have. So some of the things that you should take into consideration is you can insert pivot tables directly from here. So select the table or range, let's press okay. And then all of a sudden you have your pivot table right there. You can turn on your annual financial report. So I know a lot of people work with pivot tables. I personally don't use them too much, if at all, because I don't really know what they're used for to begin with. But I know a lot of people are like, hey, can you use pivot tables? How do pivot tables work? And especially when I try to talk about Excel on the iPad, pivot tables cannot be created on the iPad, but they can be edited and opened on the iPad itself. You also have the ability to get recommended pivot tables. So if they can recommend, so they can actually recommend a different type of pivot table, what actual variables you want in that pivot table to work with, which is great to have, especially for somebody who's a beginner to pivot tables. You also have the ability to add your pictures, your shapes, your icons, the same way you did with Word and PowerPoint. You can also do some recommended charts. So if I grab this and highlight everything, click on a recommended chart, then it's obviously gonna spit out what it recommends as a chart, which is again, very intuitive. Microsoft Excel has been doing this for years and years and years. And I think it's extremely helpful for somebody that's just quickly trying to get all their data and present their data, let's say in a PowerPoint presentation. And that's another cool thing that you can actually insert a table from an Excel file into a PowerPoint and they work together and it gets 
auto updated in real time. So if you edit it and update it in Excel, it's gonna edit and update in that PowerPoint presentation as well. But then you also have the ability to add pivot charts, spark lines, you know, you get your links, your new comments, text box, headers, footers, word art, and then you add your equations. And then another one, of course, you can draw on it very similar to the other two. You have your page layout, but then you have your formula section. This is the bread and butter of Microsoft Excel. You have your auto sum, your recently used, you have your financial formulas, your logical ones, your text formulas, date and time, reference, math and trigonometry, and also more functions, which, you know, the more the merrier, honestly. Again, because I know a lot of people go beyond just summing, subtracting, multiplying. So they gotta have all these formulas ready to go and be able to actually use them in real time as fast as you can to be as efficient as possible. But you can see all these options up here. So define name, use in formula, trace dependence, remove arrows. You also have your data section, your data slide, so it allows you to sort all your data, which is extremely, extremely important, especially if you're dealing with a lot of numbers and you gotta go in ABC order or in chronological order, all good to have. You also have the ability to get data, so a power query from HTML, from text, from a SQL server, from your database. You have the ability to add data from a picture, so a picture from file. You can refresh everything right here. You can add your stocks in there, add currencies. There's a bunch of different options on here which really help you use Excel in a robust way. So in my opinion, Excel on Mac OS Ventura is fully there. It's 100% there and it works with every Excel file. Even if somebody starts on a Windows machine, sends you an Excel file to your Apple machine, you should be able to use it and fully use it without any limitations. So as everybody saw, the Microsoft suite of applications work extremely well on MacBook computers. I would venture off and say that they work even better on a Mac computer than they do on an actual Windows machine. Especially once Apple shifted over to the M series chips and then Microsoft coded their ARM version of these products and these applications, it was a complete night and day experience. Applications opened instantly in real time. You could have 10, 20, 30 instances of PowerPoint presentations, Excel documents, word processing. You can have multiple outlooks open. Everything was just working extremely well inside of the Apple computer with Microsoft applications. And to this day, it's no different. The M2 MacBook Air, which is what I would use in this video, just has baseline 256 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. And it ran circles around these applications. And for the most part, for me especially, for somebody that doesn't go super crazy, especially on the Excel side, these applications will do everything I need them to do and then some. And then of course you get the perks of being in the Microsoft suite on an Apple computer, right? Most people like to have everything in a docx file, in a pptx file, in an Excel file. Normally if you work inside of numbers or in Google Sheets, what do you always do? You download it as an Excel file because it's just easier to pass around easier to read and easier to collaborate on those because more and more people, especially in the corporate world, are using the Microsoft suite of products because at the end of the day, as much as you wanna say it is a legacy product that's still around, it's still a very good product overall. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you guys learned something or made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And leave some comments down below. Have you tried Microsoft Office on an Apple computer? Or are you that person that kind of keeps a Windows machine around in the background for those tasks that you just kind of want to stay away from on the Mac side? Because the Mac was always made for that creative. But let me know in the comments down below what you think about running Microsoft applications on an Apple computer. And then let me know if you guys want to continue this series. I do plan on doing stuff with Outlook, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft OneNote, and then also something called Windows 365, which allows you to have Windows 11 as a virtual machine on your Mac computer, even if it is an M1 or an M2 machine. But that's going to do it, everybody. I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.